What is going on? I'm Steven Taylor and I'm joined today by a really special friend. I'm really excited about it. Uh, Robert and I have been friends for a while now and uh, he, run, he runs learnhowtorecord.com as well as he is a stellar engineer and producer here in the, Nash, the, in the Nashville area. Uh, he's, he runs Off The Wall Studios and we were having lunch and I'm like, bro, your studio is like right down the street. Why don't we get together and do something? Made sense. You know, people want to know the things in your head. So we are going to talk about in this video the um, top, your top five tips for uh, miking a snare drum. Miking a snare drum. It's one of the most basic things you can do in the studio and really a lot of your sound comes from that. Now, Robert's not just some guy that I pulled off the street. Like Robert has worked with Megadeth, Kelly Clarkson, J-Lo, Framing Hanley, Cutlass. Drop something, a few names there. You probably want to clean those up before you get out of my studio. <laughs> I actually brought a I brought a bag to put those in. I'm gonna take the names home with me. Ah, right, good. Get them off my floor. Before we get started, though, I want to hear from you. I want to know since we got Robert here, he's gonna be checking in. He's gonna be answering some questions. I want to know what your biggest question is about miking a snare drum or getting a good snare sound in the studio. Put that com in the comment section below here, or just as well, you may have a tip that you want to share with us. We all learn from each other, so put that in the comment section as well. Absolutely, there's more than one way to get to a good sound at the end of the day, and this is just because it's my way doesn't mean it's the right way, but it's how I do it, and I've gotten good sounds, and uh, that's what I'm hired for. So if your way is different from mine, and you don't have to hate me, just share what your ideas are. I'm down for it. So I know I'm tired of looking at my own face. I was tired of that, like. I don't know, how old am I, 34? Like about 33 years ago, I got tired of looking at my own face. So let's jump over to the studio and let's actually see what these tips are. Let's go. All right, so I'm gonna just kind of turn this over to Robert. This is his playground, this is his studio. And so I'm just gonna kind of let him, some of these will actually seem um, like we don't even need to mention them, right. but they're actually, a couple of them are the most important things to, Absolutely. you have to have a good foundation. So. Man, uh, what's the first? What's the first thing? Like when you're in the studio, what is the first thing you're doing? Uh, first thing, first with any of the drums, um, you need to make sure that you have a good, clean, even new drum head on the drum. Not, yeah. Not one of the ones with dimples from playing on it for the last five years in your punk ska band. Not right. one with autographs of your favorite drummer on it right. or blood stains. You need a good head that's going to be flat across the top and pretty clean. Um, that. I mean, it goes a long way. That goes a long. I can I can tell you because you get these weird overtones that you don't notice until you get into the mix, and then you're like, man, there's there's yep. this wonky sound, for for lack of a better word, that you can't, you can't fix that, like that unless you replace it. Exactly, you know? and um, the same hand it actually will start detuning a lot faster once you have the older the head is, the more it detunes. Which brings me to my second point. Um, step number two: make sure your drum is in tune. And I can't stress this enough. Um, a lot of drummers come in here, even if they're best drummers in the world, if their drums aren't tuned. It's gonna sound like poo poo in the mix. Yeah, and there's there's an art to tuning. Like there there really is. And so you should, as a drummer, you should take the time to really learn how to tune. And there's a tip that I actually I think I learned this from you, and that was um, tune in between takes if you're in the studio. Absolutely. And um, listen to previous takes. Like hey, we're good with this all the way up to the yeah. chorus. Ask for playback and listen to that snare again. And make sure your snare's not detuning when you're hitting it. Because when you hit right. that thing and you're laying into it usually the bottom lug on it, the one closest to you, is going to start turning down a little bit. If you're rim shotting a lot or even if you're just hitting the crap out of that snare, it'll detune. So make sure your snare stays in tune. Okay, so we got a, we got a fret. These two seem counter, like we get a fresh head. Do that. Invest that when you go in the studio. You've got a, uh, you've got make sure it's in tune. Make sure you really tweak that thing. What's the, what's the third thing? Third thing has to do with the microphone selection. Now, if you're recording the drums or if you're being recorded, choosing the right microphone goes a long way. Um, and here's some things to think about. A lot of people don't. One is you want a microphone that's going to take a licking. Okay. Like if you're if you're a drummer or if you have a drummer that's hitting that drum and you might be a little loose or sloppy where you're hitting it, I hope not. Um, you need a drum a microphone on the drum that you can hit and be like, "Oops, sorry about that." And like, "Oh, it's all right. It's uh, this kind of microphone." Right. It's not going to hurt it. Right. Exactly. Um, another thing to think about with that is the polar response, which means every microphone has a different part of the micro or part of the sound spectrum it picks up. Okay. Frequency wise, right. as well as picks up and stuff in front of it or behind it or around it or only in front of it or right, right. You know, different different polar responses. So you're going to need a microphone that's going to be more focused. Um, they call it cardioid. Um, okay. So it's picking up the sound in front of it and not so much behind it. And some of these some of these larger words that he's using, if you want to find out more about that, seriously, go check out his stuff. He does a great job in explaining this stuff. So give us an example of Absolutely. these. Absolutely. Here are a couple different types of microphones that I like to use on snare. Um, okay. This is a dynamic one, which yeah, means it sure. doesn't require electricity to work. It just accepts 
the signal, um, and you can play so loud, and it's not going to do anything. This microphone, I can hammer a nail in with this microphone, and it's and it's, it's not going to be good. Now, if you, it, what direction does that pick up? And you're talking about that for those this, of them that don't know. Yeah, this one's a cardioid one. Um, okay. both, both of these are cardioid. Okay. So I don't. And the thing is, when I'm miking up a snare drum, I don't want the cymbals. I don't want the kick drum yeah, and the toms. That. I want this on the snare drum. So this is going to pick up the snare drum right in front of it, and it's going to minimize any kind of bleed from other microphone or okay. other other sources. Okay. Now, what's the what's the other mic you have there? So by the way, this is Audix i5. You can pick it up for. I I use that in my studio as well. I have uh, one of these on there. Love this thing. I mean, you can get one for 100 bucks, 150 bucks. Yeah. Um, cheaper used. So um, this other one is an Octava MK012 or MC012, depending on which part of Russia they made it in or whatever. <laughs> um, and it this is a um, condenser microphone, small condenser which, as you can see, it's smaller, larger diaphragm conditioner will be bigger. You don't need to know that. And uh, it's also a very cardioid response. So same way I would use this one, I would use this one. Um, this one might cost a little bit more, but this does require phantom power. You know? Okay. Um, so depending on what gear you have, you might not be able to use something like this. Right. But this is going to have a lot more open high end. It'll reflect the high end of the snare drum a little bit differently than this one will. So it might require a different EQ or no EQ at all, depending on what you're looking for. So it's a matter of taste, and actually, I have a little doohickey that'll combine these two and I'll put them right next to each other. So you record them both. Best of both worlds. In ABM, the studio, see what I like. But choosing the right microphone is key to getting a good sound in the studio. Nice. So we have uh, tune, or we have a good drum head. It's going to be the first. We're going to have tuning. Make sure that your drum is spot on in tuning. Check it throughout the takes while you're recording. The third one is microphone uh, choice. And then we're going to go uh, for a closer shot to kind of get down to the brass tacks of, of actually miking up the snare. Some tips for that. Absolutely. All right, so placing this microphone, I'm going to start with the Audix. And what I'm going to do is put it about three fingers above the edge of the rim at the edge of the shell. So right about here. Now I'm going to aim it to where the drumstick hits the snare. So right here in the center of the snare, not towards the edge, Towards the center where your drumstick will be hitting that. That's a that's a mistake that I made. Uh, when I know I know we're off camera here, but I'm more concerned with you guys seeing what he's doing. So that's a mistake that I used to make is is I would point it down towards the edge of the drum, and and you really need to point it where the action's happening. Yeah, you're gonna get a lot more overtone if you aim it right towards the edge of the shell, or if you have it too far back this way, you're going to hear a lot more of the body. So some people will move their snare snare mic back like this, and get more of the body of the snare, more of the wood sound or the metal sound. I personally like to line it up with the edge of the rim, about three fingers above the head, aimed at the center of the head. Awesome. Now here's my little doohickey for con combining the two microphones. That's a that's a professional term, by the way, doohickey. That's a. <laughs> Don't go googling that trying to buy it on Amazon. <laughs> Where's the mic doohickey? That doohickey. So I've got both microphones, and when you're using more than one microphone on the top of a source like the snare drum, make sure the capsules, the very tip of the microphones, are lined up perfectly. I don't know if you can see that, but. Got them both parallel here. Aimed as close to the center of the snare as I can, not aimed down too much. That'll give me the attack and the body blend I like. So that's pretty much it for the top of the snare. Okay, the so now going to the, what a lot of people don't like is, is the bottom of the snare, right? And that's the, the final step here is the bottom of the snare and making sure that you're catching the wires and the strands on the bottom, the snare sound, which makes it a snare drum. Right. So it sounds snappy when you hit the drum. It doesn't sound too blurry. It doesn't sound too pongy. Right. The bottom snare mic is all about just getting the snare sounding like a snare. Okay, so walk us through how you would set that up. So which mic do we have here? So I'm using the same mic I used on the top, the Audix i5. And there are several ways I like to mic up the bottom of the snare. One being reciprocating the angle at the top. Edge of the shell, three fingers down, aimed towards the center of the snare. Another way I like to, probably you know, half as much or half as often, I will actually move it in there closer to the center of the snare. If I can get this up. Aim straight up. So what I have to look for is phase. Now you don't need to know too much about that right now. This is basically just a mic technique course uh, that we're going through here, showing you the tips on how to mic the snare without getting too much in depth into the science behind it. That could take you know, years of schooling to get all that stuff yeah, they, handled. They offer degrees in that stuff. Absolutely. So the phase where the waveform hits the microphone is either going up or down, and you want those to line up. So 
If your snare, top snare mic and bottom snare mic are out of phase, your, fa your snare will sound thin. If they are in phase, it'll sound fat and thick, just like a snare drum should sound in your ears and how it sounds in the room. So it's important once you get in the control room with headphones on or with your speakers to just take a listen to both mics together and make sure it's not sounding thin or phasey. But again, my go-to way, edge of the shell, edge of the rim, three, three fingers down, and uh, aim towards the center of the snare. Kind of a mirror image from the top and the bottom. So those were the five steps that I use personally in the studio every time I need to mic a snare drum, and hopefully you got something from those. And he should know because like he is sought after for his drum sounds. I'm gonna brag on him. The dude's good at what he does. Now hopefully this video has helped you. If it has, then click the like button and maybe share it with another drummer or musician that you think it could help. If you want to know more about recording, go to learnhowtorecord.com or recordinghelp.com. Robert's there, he's gonna email us, jump on that, he puts out tons of great information and tutorials, so you really wanna check that out as well. I've got the free 30 days to better doubles that you can check out, but no matter what you do, I will see you here in the next video. And the next video is gonna be on uh, how to mic a kick drum. How to mic a kick drum to get that fat tone. That's make what it we're gonna punch. Make it punch, is that the actual, when you? Um, they teach you that in the textbooks. Like, like is that, is it uh, the textbooks? <laughs> It's that it's that thick, and most of the pages are actually how to do that. You can't even turn this way. Yeah, turn you, have to, you have to. <laughs>